So we will proceed with the examination of second nerve and second nerve as you all know is optic nerve and this second nerve is examined under four main headings. First we will check for visual activity, second we will check for visual field, third we will check for color vision and finally fourth we will check for pupillary reflexes. So let's start with visual equity. So by checking visual equity, we use this chart. We have two uh, forms of visual equity checking. One is for far vision and one is for near vision. So first we will be checking the far vision and then the near vision. So for checking far vision, we have this chart. This is the this Snellens chart. The Snellens chart. And if you see the Snellens chart, we can see um, we have eight rows, eight rows, and as you move downwards, the letters are decreasing in size. And each line, we have a letter, letters uh, which are written. Now, how do you interpret this chart? The first line should be normally read by a person who is at 60 meters. The second line, usually read by a person who is at 36 meters away from this chart. And similarly, 24, 18, 12, 9, 6, and 5. So this is what the chart means. Now we are going to place this chart on the wall and we are going to ask the subject to sit at 6 meters away from this chart. And then he will be reading from above down. Okay. So we will start, we will ask him to read. So first we have to ask the consent. Are you ready for the examination? Yes. Okay. Now you can start reading. Meanwhile, I will show uh, so that you can also know whether he is right or wrong. I will just place this like this. Now you can start reading. Okay. Uh, before that, you have to always ask the subject to examine each eye separately. That means first right eye. Now I am going to examine his right eye. Okay. Now you can start reading. Meanwhile, you can check this. A O X A U T X U A H L A O T N C L O A E L N E T H O C. Yes, very good. Now we can shift the other eye. Can close this eye. Yes. Now we are checking his left eye. A O X A U T X U A H L A O T N C L O A E L N E T H O C. Yes, very good. So now the examination of both eyes for visual equity. Far vision is over. Now we have to know how to report. So the report would be visual equity equals small d divided by capital D. So we have a numerator value and a denominator value. What does this numerator small d mean? It means at what distance we have placed the subject. That is your small d. And what is this capital D? The capital D is the line which he has read. That means if he has read only A, then the small capital D becomes 60. If he has read the seventh line, that means the small the capital D becomes 6 so in this way. Here he is able to read only up to the seventh line. He can't read the eighth line. So this 6 becomes the capital D. This is how you interpret your um, findings. Now suppose there are certain uh, situations where maybe Dr. Venkatesh is only able to read the third line, up to the third line. What would be your interpretation? Your interpretation would be V equals only two lines he can read. He can read up to 36. So it becomes 6 by 36. 6 is the distance. So 6 by 36. If he can read only the first line, then it becomes V equals 6 by 60. Now suppose he can't read this first line. What is the option? So we have to ask him to sit 
closer now he is at 6 meters now he sits at 5 meters and then reads so your small d becomes 5 now he can't read this first line at 5 meters what happens we ask him to uh, be more closer at 4 meters so the small d becomes 4 similarly it becomes 1 by 60 that means at 1 meters closer he tries to read this and still if, if he can't read the first line at 1 meters then the next option is to stop the Snellen's chart and use your hands and ask him to count let uh, how much one one so in this method also you have to check each eye separately he has closed his eye so you are asking him to count is that three? Two. two yes so he can count suppose he can't count then the next option is to wave the hand and to check for hand motion the motion of the hand yes so this is the next step now he if he can't assess this motion then the next option is to light uh, use a torch and use flash just flash lights and check whether he can um, appreciate this flashlight and still if he can't do uh, can't uh, appreciate this light then it means that he is blind so this is how you check for visual equity far vision now we will see how to check the uh, visual equity for near vision and for this you have another chart and this is your Jagger's chart and this looks like this we have a lot of writings uh, sentences are written here and each have a number written here number one number two number three number four number five number six like this we have a lot of as you go downwards the size of the letters increase this is how a jagger chart is now this is read with a no, at a normal reading distance like this we have to keep and the patient or the subject has to read normally a subject can read at number five number five is a normally read so i will ask him to keep this in his hand and read just try number five the undertaking became every day more difficult the event more doubtful and the position made more precarious and less beneficial the experience of augustus added weight to these solitary reflections and effectually convinced him that the protector vigor yes so he can read easily and number five so your interpretation is the jagger's chart for near vision is n5 okay so this is how we examine the visual equity now let us start examination of visual field so what is visual field visual field is the extent of extent of vision when the eye is fixed on an object and we have two methods to assess the visual field here we have confrontation method and then we have the perimeter method so here we are going to do the confrontation method now how do you do confrontation method so here we compare the visual field of the subject with that of the examiner assuming that the examiner has a normal visual field for this we have to confront each other that means we have to uh, sit in facing each other then opposite to each other at one meter distance apart so that's the first thing now each eye has to be examined separately after this you when you start examining you actually examine in four quadrants you have to have a lateral quadrant a superior quadrant inferior quadrant and a middle quadrant now before we start examining we ask subject to close one eye and the exam also closes one eye and supposing for example if we are testing the lateral quadrant we will uh, uh, the examiner uses his full arm distance laterally and then there is movement of index finger now the examiner is asking the subject to appreciate the movement of the index finger so the examiner has to bring it from um, lateral most point towards medially at one point when the examiner see the movement he stops and asks the subject whether he can see the movement. If he can see the same movement, this, this uh, small movement, it assumes that the subject is having a normal visual field. Now suppose the examiner can appreciate but the subject cannot appreciate. At this point, 
uh, the examiner has to bring the uh, finger more medially and at one point maybe the subject can see now this means that there is a restriction of visual field for that eye in this subject now in the similar manner we will repeat the same thing superiorly inferior quadrant and middle quadrants so this is how you do confrontation method so the things that you should take care when you do one is the one meter distance uh, sitting facing each other then we have the one single eye examination and then fixing the gaze which is very important he has to fix the gaze that means he has to see only the examiner he should not move his eyeballs laterally he should fix the gaze so this is how the visual field testing is done this has to be repeated in the other eyeballs so let's do the visual field now i'm going to test the visual field of his left eye from his left eye for this i use my right eye as a first point now as you can see we are sitting at a distance of 1 meter and we are facing each other so these are the important points when you do confrontation and then i'm going to ask his consent first and then i'm going to explain him what we are going to do after this i also ask him to fix the gaze that means from now onwards he should look on my eyes not anywhere so that is fixing the gaze so after these things we are going to start here yes. so what you should do is you have to fix your gaze that means you should not look anywhere just from my eyes okay now we are going to test your left eye so you have to close your right eye so here he closes his uh, right eye and i close my left eye and now it's the lateral quadrant that i'm going to show now when when you start seeing this motion you have to say yes now we stop here i also can see and he also can see so i assume that his lateral quadrant is having a normal visual field you know we are going to test the superior quadrant here so the same point motion yes yes so here also he is having a normal visual field so superior quadrant tarena yes yes immediately yes so i have tested his left eye visual field similarly you have to test the the other eye also so this is how your visual field confrontation method is done so now we are going to test the color vision so color vision is tested with the help of a chart which is called ishara chart so this is your ishara chart it has 38 plates in this plates if you go through you can see there are uh, numbers numericals written but in a mixture of the primary colors and secondary colors so for a normal subject it is very easy to make out which letter is written but for a color blind individual it becomes difficult to understand what numerical is written here so the test is very simple it doesn't require any special skill we give the book to this particular person and ask him to read out so here i am asking him to read out so shall we start as i have gone so this is the chart you just have to read this this way this 12 yes 12 it's 12 8 yes good so he has written it properly read it properly that means that his color vision is normal so this completes your second no or optic nerve examination where we have already taught you the visual acuity visual field the color vision now the remaining is pupillary reflexes pupillary reflex should be taught along with the second nerve and the third nerve now why because when you are teaching the pupillary reflex its afferent component is second nerve so it has a it has to be always Uh, taught along with second nerve at the same time the efferent component is the third nerve so it becomes a part of third nerve examination so whenever for the examination whenever this part is asked you should always mention pupillary reflex along with second nerve examination and also along with third nerve examination but here we are teaching you the 
pupillary reflex examination along with third nerve. So that finishes our second nerve. Thank you.